We have already recreated many experiences from our watch site of the day and even a few from site of the month. So this time, I decided to explore the site of the year to see what makes this website stand out. That's when I stumbled upon a website called KPverse. Its navigation caught my eye with some incredible hover effects, each unique and with something extra. There was a key shuffling letters animation on the primary links, an advanced shuffle letter reveal animation on the side superscript text, and at the bottom, a shuffle effect paired with a background hover animation. So I challenged myself to recreate all these using just JavaScript. My goal was to rebuild these effects without any external libraries like GSAP, and I think I can say that I managed to pull off all the hover animations using only HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In today's video, I'll guide you through recreating this cool menu and these hover animations. If you enjoy these videos, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Just a reminder that you can access the source code with the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code now. Let's start by adding the navigation. This will have a menu toggle button and some placeholder text. Next, we'll add a container which will hold a separate container for the menu and the menu container will contain the actual menu. We are going to divide the menu into two columns, the main menu with the actual links and the sidebar. The main menu will be further divided into two parts, the top and the bottom sections. The top section will have two columns, the title and the content. The title will be a paragraph with the text discover. The content is where we'll add the menu items. Each item will have a link container that includes the background we need for the hover effect and the actual link. We'll also add a span element which will later style as superscript. I replicate this menu item 5 more times giving us a total of 6 links and update the text accordingly. For the bottom part of the menu, we'll need 3 rows. Each row will have a menu title and content again. For now, we'll add some placeholder text and replicate this row 2 more times. The sidebar will have the close button and the logo. Make sure to give one of the menu items an active ID as we'll style it differently. That's it for the HTML, let's move on to the styling now. We'll start by resetting the margin, padding and box sizing to border box for all elements. Next, we'll set the width and height to 100% for both the HTML and body elements. We'll also apply a font family and a background color. For the anchor tags, paragraphs and spans, We'll set the text to uppercase, adjust the font size, line height and set the cursor to pointer. Now let's style the navigation bar. We'll fix it to the top, give it a full width and center its contents. We'll also add some padding and a Z index to ensure it's on top. Moving on to the container, we'll set its dimensions to cover the entire viewport. The menu container will be positioned in the center of the screen initially placed off screen to the left but for now i'll just set it to 0% just so we can style it we'll add some padding set its dimensions and apply a transition for the slide in effect the menu itself will be styled with a black background white text and rounded corners we'll also ensure it fills the container and hides any overflow The main menu will occupy most of the space and will separate it into top and bottom sections. We'll add a border to distinguish these parts. In the top section, we'll add padding to the title and set up the content area to hold up our menu items. Each menu item will start slightly off screen to the left and slide in on toggle. We'll set relative positioning and add padding for spacing. The link within each menu item 
will be styled with a bold font, a specific font size and a custom font family. We'll also set a slight left padding and ensure it stays on top. We'll add a background hover effect using a div positioned absolutely. The background will transition to full opacity on hover. The active menu item will have a distinct color for both the text and background hover. For the superscript text, we'll position it absolutely and add padding. Next, we'll style the bottom part of the menu. Each row will have a border, padding and a flex layout to separate the title from the content. The menu content will include a paragraph with a custom hover effect that reveals a background color through keyframe animation. Finally, we'll style the sidebar with padding, a close button and a logo. The close button will have a border and a cursor pointer. For responsiveness, we'll adjust the menu container width and hide certain elements on smaller screens. We'll also tweak the padding and visibility of the menu items and titles. That's it for the CSS. Next, we'll move on to JavaScript to bring these hover effects to life. We'll start by adding an event listener for when the document content is loaded. First, we'll select the necessary elements, the menu toggle button, the close button, the menu container, and the menu items. Next, we'll add a click event listener to the menu toggle button. When clicked, the menu container will slide in from the left and we will call functions to shuffle all items and animate the menu items into view. Similarly, we will add a click event listener to the close button as well to slide out the menu container back out and animate the menu items out of the view. Then we will define the animate menu items function to handle the sliding animation of each menu item. Depending on the direction, the items will either slide in or out with a staggered effect. Now let's split the text into characters for animation using the split type library. Now let's dive into adding interactivity and animations to our menu items.
First, we select all elements with the class menu item and iterate over each item. For each menu item, we look for the link inside the menu item link container. If the link is found, we get its width and set the width of the background hover element to be slightly larger than the actual link, adding 30 pixels to the width. Next, we check for the span element within the menu item. If it exists, we position it to the right of the link, adding 40 pixels to the link's width for the left offset. We then define functions to add and remove the class character active to the characters in the span element. The color characters function iterates over the characters and adds the class with a staggered delay, creating a sequential animation effect. The clear color characters function removes the character active class from all characters, resetting their appearance. Then we add event listeners for the mouse enter and mouse leave events on the link element. When the mouse enters, the color characters function is called to activate the animation. When the mouse leaves, the clear color characters function is called to reset the characters. Next we add hover effects to all menu items, titles and the content elements. First, for each link, we add an event listener for the mouse enter event. When the mouse enters, we look for the target elements inside the link, the menu link, the menu title, or the content paragraph. If a target element is found, we call the add shuffle effect function to add a shuffle animation to its text. If there is a span element within the link, we add shuffle effect to it as well. Then we define the shuffle all function to apply the shuffle effect to all target elements when the menu is opened. The add shuffle effect function is where the magic happens. We select all the characters in the target element and store their original text content. We set up intervals and delays for the shuffle effect. Each character's text content is replaced with a random letter, creating a dynamic shuffle animation. After a short delay, the original text content is restored, completing the shuffle animation. This detailed JavaScript functionality adds engaging interactivity and animations to our menu, enhancing the user experience. And that's it for the JavaScript. Now let's see these effects in action. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.